Demoji 2 TV, we're here to bring you another high school mat matchup 2019 2020 season. Tonight we got LaSalle welcoming the Blue Streaks of Saratoga. Saratoga Blue Streaks coming off uh, Section 2 Class AA title. And the LaSalle Cadets coach had a wonderful season last year. Tell me your thoughts so far about these two teams. Well, what you have here is you have Saratoga coming in as a defending Section 2 champions. Have to reload a little bit. They lost a little bit. Right here, we have a little interruption. We got to get ready for the National Anthem. So give us a second. We'll be right back at you in a second after the introductions. About the live action, high school basketball. Emoji 2 TV is bringing it, the sports cast to you. Got the jump ball here. We got uh, Michael Rogan about to jump it off with Owen Kane tonight, Coach. Um, Coach, give me your early assessment of what you expect to see out of these two team programs tonight. Um, I see a fill-out game between these two programs tonight. Look like we may have a re-jump here, but I see a, a fill-out game for both of these programs. You got a LaSalle team who's a lot of sophomores that got a lot of playing time last year moving up, see what they can do. And Saratoga lost a lot of fire punch and then they had last year in that Section 2 run. So it's a fill-out program for both teams early in the season. Okay, LaSalle gets that tip. Find Jemiah down low. Dixon does. Jemiah Evans gets tied up with Rogan, I believe, downstairs. So the possession arrow goes to the Blue Streaks. Michael Rogan will start duties off at the point guard position. He got Aiden Holmes on his left and D'Agostino, who has the ball now, on his right. Working the ball around the horn a little bit. A little moving there by Aiden Holmes. Gets it inside, kicks it out. D'Agostino wasn't ready for it. Kick it out for a three ball. Up, up and away, no good. Tracks it down, Dofer does. Dofer coached a sophomore last year on the varsity team. This is a junior looking to get more minutes. Ball goes in and out by Michael Rogan. Coach, we didn't see much from Dofer last year playing behind Trudy and um, Fox last year. So you know he's thirsty to get some action this year. Absolutely, he's gonna be looking definitely to assert himself this year and see can he, where he can find out where he can fit in with his offense. And right away, look like we got a turnover here. Yes, we got a turnover. Got a backcourt. I thought there was a little tip there, and Coach Desso was asking for the refs to rethink that call, but they choose not to. The ball be taken out at half court here by Michael Rogan. Aiden Holmes will trigger the offense from the top of the key. 2 3 zone here, Coach, by the cadets here. They got two guys high post here for the uh, Blue Streaks. Fire away, no good. Back iron. Rebound there by Emery, looks like. He gets blocked. Evans there, coach, with the rebound. Bo Cathaway dribbles it up, passes it. Oh, Lucarelli, coach, bombs away. Three ball from the top of the key, coach, with 6.30 to play in the first quarter. Three nothing. Cadets. Aiden Holmes right back at him, coach. Coach, talk about that little, that little, uh, little, little banter you had uh, on the, on the, on our preseason show. Well, I sat down with both teams and I asked Lucarelli, I said, what are you expecting tonight? He said, nothing short of a victory. He guaranteed it. And then I talked to Adam Holmes. He said, yeah, that's a good thought to have, but we'll see come playing time. Okay, another shot. Jemiah tips it out to Kane. It's too hard there. We got a stoppage of play here. Somebody left a sneaker back home. Lucarelli will go retrieve his sneaker, put it back on. Coach, that's a safety issue, Coach, or is that usually a play on? Um, I guess it's a matter of a when you want to stop it to play. At some point, you're going to stop it. I mean, that situation, I presumably let Saratoga go. It's not their fault that the shoe came off, and then you stop the play at some juncture. Okay, we got Dak Casino top, ready to start the offense. Holmes gets trapped over in the coffin corner, gets it out. Rogan for three, hits the back iron, Coach. Rebound. Rogan surveys the floor, looks down low to Dofert, gets a pump fake, goes up, draws a foul on Evans, coach. Coach Desso doesn't want to get Evans in foul trouble, coach. He's looking, he's looking for big things out of Evans this year. Yeah, Jemai has to just stay on his feet. That time, Dofert did a good job. You can tell Jemai won this. He had arms up on um, vertical style, but that little pump fake got him off his feet, and Dofert was able to get into his body and draw contact and go to the line for two. A lot of size in the court, coach. Um, by the uh, cadets here, and you got Evans and you got Kane there, two giants, six six or better, coach. I might say six seven, maybe six eight, 
The guys are giant. Lucarelli is not a shorty himself, coach. He's about 6'5". So, you know, Dixon about 6'4". I mean, coach, we got around over our high here. Dofer knocks down, coach, one of two. The 50-50 factor was definitely in effect there. Saratoga takes his first lead with 5.27 to go, first quarter, 4-3. to three. Cadets work the ball around. Kane has it, looks down low. That's Dofer, coach. Dofer playing great post defense. Stop and pop our own. No good. Rogan there with the rebound. Oh, oh, he gets tripped up. Good move there by Rogan. Very aggressive there, coach. I love, Rogan has been very aggressive so far in this matchup, coach. I thought he was in shooting motion there, coach. You thought, you thought not as well? Well, he got tripped before he was able to go up airborne, so he could, the crowd was calling the ground because he got tripped before he got a chance. Thanks for clearing that up. Holmes takes it out, gets it to Dilford right away. He goes up, rebounding. Emery, oh, he gets fouled by Kane. You got two big guys, coach, in foul trouble right now. Well, each, not foul trouble, but each with one. With 5.02 to go in the first quarter, coach. Both big guys with one foul. He takes Kane now. He trusts Evans more, coach, here. I guess Jamai playing varsity last year. I guess he developed some trumps there from Coach Desso. Owen Holmes, I mean, Holmes will take it out, dumps it down on Rogan. Rogan off the glass. Nice, soft like. Know that window. They get it up real quick, coach, here. Pulls up. Point guard off the pitch here, coach. It's first shot. Throws it up. Nothing but oxygen. Oh, baby. Is that Emory, coach? Emory knocks it down from long range. Okay, so no, he's going to the long two pointer. So far, it's 40. 4-4-4 four, four, four on the clock, Coach. Saratoga Blue Streets goes up 8-3. to three. What are your thoughts? And that little run right there forces LaSalle to take a timeout. So Desso takes a 30-second timeout. See what happens. You got a guy come off the bench right away, and he takes the elevated shot. And Saratoga comes back on the other end. They get a chance to turn into two points off of a quick shot like that. You know Saratoga is going to play within himself. Usher's going to have them guys playing fundamental basketball. LaSalle here, they have an open offense and like to get out and run. You still have to be patiently and smartly aggressive. <laughs> okay, Coach. The cadets, like they were triggered in at the 444 mark here, Coach. They're down by five. Looking to make a cut the tide here by the um, blue streaks here. Coach, it seems like, you know, right now the aggressor for the streaks def definitely seems to be Rogan, Coach. He's taken like three shots already, all good shots. And um, I've yet to see anybody really stand out for LaSalle as uh, a gross, aggressive, aggressive uh, offensive threat right now. He seems to do it by committee. Point guard here, kicks it out to Lucarelli. He drives it, kicks it out. Drives it in, throws it up, no good. Throws up an ill shot there. Rebound by the Blue Streaks. Rogan spots up deep. Oh, in and out. Dofer, skies in there. Gets it knocked away. Gets his own rebound. Kicks it out. Nearly got stolen from behind. Desso is calling out the plays on the defensive end. Good kick. Rogan. Oh, baby. That can't go. Oh, he got hit in the wrist there. No call. Gets his own rebound. Off the glass. Too strong. Evans with the rebound there. Kicks it out to Catherwood. Catherine with spins, loses the ball. Dofer gets it, kicks it to D'Agostino. Dag oh, Evans the long arms. Devin's long, Evans the long arms, coach. And then Lucarelli tracks down and throws it off of a blue streak, coach. That's the kind of defense that Coach Desso wants Evans to play. Stay in his ground, use those long arms, contest shots that way, stay out of foul trouble. Coach, what are you thinking if you're Desso trying to get Dixon involved in the offensive flow right now? What are you going to do to get him going? I don't know. LaSalle is out of sync right now. They're looking to get something from somewhere. They got to be a little bit more patient. This guy Hoyer is taking some ill-advised shots, coming off the bench cold and being a little erratic. Let's see if he gives them a, a punch here. Oh, that post defense by the Blue Streaks is outstanding so far early on here. Good dump down. Nice left hand finish by Delford. Dixon is uh, carrying up the point guard duties here. Floated by Dixon, no good. Rebound, blue streaks. Michael Rogan tracks it down, looks to attack. 
Goes the left hand, Lele. Gets fouled here. Right now, coach, is 2.55. Score is 10, blue streaks, three. Cadets. Okay, Rogan misses first opportunity to line tonight. We got 2.55 to go in the first quarter. 7-0 run here by the Blue Streaks. Second one's up. Good. 50, 50 factor. Dixon pushes up. Dixon pushes up. Oh, gets it to Hoyer. Knocks down the three ball. Hoyer knocks it down, breaks that style a little bit there. Gives them six points. Yeah, six to 13. Dofer goes up, gets blocked, kicks it out to D'Agostino. D'Agostino, one dribble to the left, spot, splash, long two-pointer. They're still looking down low to Lucarelli. Lucarelli takes one dribble, gets it out, gets fouled down low by Dofer with the harm. Looking to get a three-point play the old-fashioned way. So, Lucarelli coach knocked down a long range three. Now you got three the old fashioned way here, knocking down the free throw, coach. You got six early points here in the uh, uh, first quarter. Roger surveys the floor. Lucarelli sir, sneaks, sniffs that out, goes in for the Lele, scores! Lucarelli's on a run all by his own, coach. We got a foul here, coach. Desso really wanted that charge. Dixon will pick it up. Score is 14-11. You know the cadets wasn't gonna. Score is 14-11. Dixon's second personal foul, excuse me. 158 to go. Coach, Dexter's gonna leave him in there, coach. What do you think about that call? Well, coach, I know before you alluded to the fact of Dixon having foul trouble issues, sometimes being overly aggressive. That was something you gotta watch for. Dofer goes up, no good. Rebound, Owen. Kane. Gives it to Hoyer. Hoyer razzles and dazzles. Gets a foul on Aiden Holmes. Don't forget, picks up two here. Okay, Duff, yeah, Duffer will sub out. What is his second personal foul here with 140 to go? With a hang, clinging to a one point lead to change the score on the scoreboard. 13 12 here. Hoyer knocks down the free throw, ties the game. Hoyer knocks down both free throws. Dagasino looks to penetrate, kicks it out to Holmes. Holmes gets it, gets it tipped away, stops and pops, comes up short, gets de deflected there, tapped out like two streets of. That's Holmes backtrack from Lucarelli. Good steal by Holmes. Start the offense, 106 to go. First quarter, 13 13, all knotted up. Long three by Holmes. Oh, baby, AT&T, knock it down, three ball, Aiden Holmes. Gives them a three-point lead, 16-13, under 40 seconds of play, first quarter. Cathaway gets it up to Hoyer. Hoyer gets fouled for three. We'll go for the four-point play, Coach Possible. Take the lead with 37.7 seconds left. Coach, he came in the game really erratic. Was it first game jitters or something? Because this guy's playing right now. 
No, I think he's probably the kind of guy that the coach is comfortable with knowing that he will take some ill advised shots and that he needs to get going. But once he gets going, he could be effective, as we've seen here early on in the first quarter. Free throw, no good. Tie ball game. Kane and Rogan battle for it. Turnover. Cadets gets it. Secure it. Catherwood has it. Lucarelli has it, gives it to Hoyer to start the offense up. We have Jemiah and Dixon on the bench right now with the big man Kane with one foul. He's still in the game. Coach Desso is really utilizing that bench really well. Lucarelli looks to penetrate. Catherwood has it. Spots up the lefty for three. No good. Rebound. Rogan. Two seconds left. Throws up at the buzzer. And it's no good. I'm not sure I would have counted or not. Okay, Coach, your early assessment so far in this game. Well, we came out early. We saw both teams trying to fill themselves out. Early game, early season jitters and all of that good stuff. But you saw Saratoga start to make a little run, assert themselves a little bit. And then you see LaSalle in turn come back. But Saratoga right now, you got Aiden Holmes doing the damage and Rogan being very aggressive. And surprisingly enough, for LaSalle, Hoyer came off, Coach. And early on, he got eight points right off the rip that quick. When he came in, took those two shots. We were wondering what was going on. But he has got calmed down, gotten in sync, and got this cadet team playing really well. And now, Coach, we got a 16-16 game after the first period. And now we have to look at the fact that Jemiah Evans got two fouls and Dixon has two fouls. And, Coach, I thought you were going to allude earlier to Dixon because you made that clear to me when we was talking off camera that Dixon is something to be concerned about with his foul trouble, Coach. Yeah, coach. He had a, um, he's an outstanding hustler. He got a, he's got a, a certain amount of grit with him. And sometimes that over exuberance causes you to do, you know, silly fouls like reaching in, you know, going over the back, things like that. So it seems like he hasn't fixed that, that, uh, the issue quite yet. But um, you know, they're still doing it with his, with him being on the bench, coach. So that's what has to be happy with his bench points right now, coach. I mean, you know, you got uh, Hoyer, like you said, came in and gave some, some really quality minutes there. So we got the second half, second quarter about to start. And Evans will still maintain the, remain on the bench. And Evans, Jemiah Evans, will remain on the bench to start the second quarter. Dofer will start um, on the bench for the Blue Streaks. The ball's worked around the horn. Kick it out the uh, oh. Catherwood knocks it down for three. Gives the LaSalle the first lead in a long time here to start the second quarter, 19 to 16 over the Blue Streaks. Get Michael Rogan in the high post area. He goes in. That'd be a jump ball situation going to the Blue Streaks. Oh, LaSalle. Yeah, the, I had it right the first time. <laughs> Blue Streaks would call out something at a stack type of set here, coach. Oh, stolen. Anticipated that. Oh, the Lele. Score by the young fella. Wilbury. Can't pronounce his name. High post again there for Rogan. Spot up D'Agostino, knocks it down, long two. Stimulate lead. And Coach Usher wanted that timeout right away. D'Agostino, nice pull up there. LaSalle is up 21-16 with 6.59 to go in the second quarter. <laughs> okay, back to live action. Cadets working the ball around. Poirier with it, played a tremendous first quarter here for the cadets. Go, what type of offense is the cadets running here? A little motion screen away offense right here with a um, four and one down though. Getting down to LaCrelly. He's trying to freak to LaCrelly. Yeah. Okay, here we got a foul down low. Great digging defense in there by, uh, by the Blue Streaks. Almost came out with the steal. Unable to contain it and get away with a foul. I think Aiden Holmes. Aiden Holmes there got uh, hit with that foul. I'll be sure to check to make sure. 
Right now the team fouls are LaSalle with five, Blue Streaks with four team fouls. With 6.30 to go, second quarter. 21-18, Cadets are up. Ball's worked around the horn. Hoyer looks to maneuver. Nowhere to go, good defense by the Blue Streaks. Mishandle, Hoyer tracks it down, looking for some hole. Catway from way downtown. No good, hits the wire. No good, hits the wire up top. Interference. Cadets built their lead here, coach. They went up by five here, coach. You know, um, very smooth like. <laughs> what are your thoughts about that? I mean, they're chipping away and they're finding their rhythm and they're getting some good bench plays, some good defense, and Saratoga has stalled just a tad a little bit here. Okay, Aiden Holmes hasn't seen in a while. Throws up a three. No good, comes up short. Rebound. Oh, good look down low to Rogan. Logan looks down low again. Oh, good block there by Kane. Kane with the beautiful block. Coach, these, these tall guys for a LaSalle coach are definitely rim protectors tonight. Yes, and when you have a bench like that, you can afford to give Evans and Dixon a blow right now and get some quality play from your bench. You got that stack deep, um, out of bounds play that gave him trouble last time. Pump fake that by Rogan. Beautiful move there. Nice and steady Eddie on that move. Very good patience. Little head and shoulders fake there. He didn't bite as much, he still went up strong, scored it. Long three there, no good, rebound. Blue streaks. Ball being pushed. Ball gets lost. Emery loses the ball, trying to make something happen for his team. Blue streaks are down by one with 5.27 to go. Like the clock stopped for a minute there. Okay, we're back to live action. Coach wants to call a down, a thumbs down play here. See what happens here. Kane asks for the ball in the right wing there. Looks down low to Lucarelli. Spin move in the post area. Goes up, no good. Too much contact there by the Blue Streaks. Lucarelli to go to the line. Shooting two. With 5 12 to go with a one point advantage. 21 to 20. Aiden Holmes, who had a break, will come back in the game right now after this free throw. Luca really has been perfect from the foul line tonight. He has one more. Luca really extends the lead to two points here, 22-20. Second one's up and it's good. Three point advantage for the cadets here with 5-11 to go. Second quarter. These guards for the cadets are really fast here, coach. You gotta watch those passes with those guys around. Holmes works, moves his feet, gets open, spots up, no good. Ball gets tapped away. Luca Relly box out really good there. Gets tipped out by the blue streaks. But Coach Desso is giving these guys that are on the bench guys. Bench guys a lot of minutes, Coach. Catherwood looks up, no good. Hits the back iron. Smallest guy in the court, Coach, gets the rebound and draws a foul. Right now, Coach, the Blue Shirts are having an issue with boxing out. Coach, he was shooting that, I thought. Why do you think that wasn't a shooting foul, Coach? Can you give me an assessment on that? No, I wasn't sure, Coach. I thought maybe he felt he didn't go up into his motion of completion to be gone or a two-point shot. But from my perspective, I thought so too, Coach. I thought it was a shooting foul. Okay, Catherwood gets it in. Swings it around to Lucarelli. Gets it top of the key. Hoyer has it. Looks to a jab step. Makes a move on the end line. Kicks it back out to Kane. Big fella with three. In and out. Rebound, blue streaks. D'Agostino has it. Gets it out to Rogan. Rogan, oh good look. Way to share the rock by the blue streaks here. Wow, Aiden Home finishes down low. Gives them back in with the one. Cadets are still up 23-22. With 3.55 to go. Hoyer with the ball on the right wing there, coach. Like he's in trouble a little bit. Takes a dribble, kicks it out to Catherwood. Kane tries another three. This time, it goes down. Three birds with one stone. With 3.40 to go. 
second quarter. Cadets up, 26, 22. Holmes spots up a three, hits the back iron, rebound. Cadets, Hoyer pushes it. Looks to drive it all the way in. Draws a foul on Holmes, coach. I believe that's Holmes' second, second personal foul. First one up by Hoyer. Hits the back iron. So far, Coach, the cadets missed quite a few three, uh, free throws. It looks like if this game gets close here, they can definitely point to an area where they may need some improvement. Second one, no good either. Hits the, post, hits the posterior. Michael Rogan with the rebound. Dagestino looks at the three. Kicks it out. Good dub down the end line there for three. Knocks it in. Three ball, blue streak, side pocket. 25, blue streak to LaSalle's 26. One point advantage for LaSalle. Just about three minutes to play in the second quarter. He gets it stolen. Holmes picks it up. Euro steps. Kane too big. Oh, get the first lead for the long time for the blue streaks. They're up 27-26 over the cadets. Good post defense. Lucarelli gains it. Lucarelli gets bumped. No call. Oh, good fake. Goes back up. Lucarelli lose some, use some high IQ on that one, coach. Fake everybody out. Gives them a lead here for 28, 27. Holmes goes up for two. I thought he got hit on that. No call. Gives the Blue Shakes a lead. Holmes starting to eat up here, coach. Lucarelli, he see Lucarelli eat. He said, I got to eat too. You got a foul up top. The South student body is really into it here. Talk about you can't do that. Catherwood will take a big take a seat to the bench and they bring Dixon back in. Holmes with Got 10 team foul. Okay, Holmes with 10, 10 points there and winding down the second quarter. Oh, the free throw by Lucarelli. He missed. First free free throw missed by Lucarelli. Rogan spots up. Holmes rebounds it. Dixon traps him in the corner there. Kicks it out for three ball for Rogan. Sets his feet. No good. You got to travel here by Luca Relli. Blue Streaks will take it out. Blue Streaks 29, Cadet 28, 147 to go. Coach, what do you think about this pace right now in this game as Hoyer takes a, a needed rest here? It looks like a game that both teams haven't played all year. It's the first game of the season. You can tell nobody's really not getting any chemistry or in sync. Oh, Rogan gets a nice pass inside. Dumps it back to the inbounder. Inbounder goes up and gets fouled, coach. Oh, Bushi's missed that free throw. Gets his own rebound, goes up. Gets some contact there, no call. Luca Reddy tracks down the rebound. Gets it to Kane. Gets it to Dixon. Dixon too strong. Missed the alley oop there. Oh, D'Agostino showing some handles up top. Gets it to Holmes. Holmes gets tripped. No call. Coach, did you really think that Holmes fell on his own like that? I mean, what's going on here, Coach? No, I thought that was some contact where legs got tangled up. They probably could call it incidental contact in that situation. So that's the about best I could think of right there at this juncture. Like the coach, like the referees are, you know, getting the preseason mode as well. They got to get into the, get a couple games leave their belt. <laughs> they have some scrimmages. 
<laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, coach, we, we're nearing one minute here. Dixon with the ball. Dixon for three, spots it. No good. D'Agostino kicks it. Oh, Rogan. D'Agostino connection. The Rogan D'Agostino connection down low. You can tell these guys play a lot together with that type of play there, coach. Yeah, man. I mean, Saratoga just doing what Saratoga does. They never get frantic. Coach Usher never gets frantic. He keeps his cool, calm, and collective on the sidelines. And those guys just play basketball and let the rest speak for themselves. And right now, they're able to stretch the lead to five points here in the second period with 51 seconds left to go. Really close game, really tight game. It's been a, like a mini game of runs. You saw Saratoga come out and search and search a little bit. LaSalle get back into the game, extend the lead a little bit. Now here it is, Saratoga again. So it's something to be expected. And this is the kind of matches we like to see. We'll see what coaches have in their grab bag and what they'll be pulling out for this holiday season. So true, coach. We got 51.1 seconds left, coach, here to uh, end this first half with the uh, blue streaks up 33 to 28 over the cadets here, coach. Um, I think I think really, it really no advantage, but it could be a little bit of advantage for the um, for the blue streaks only because they're a guard laden team with experience, whereas cadets are a front line man type team with experience you know what i mean so usually teams would rather have that one point guard that has that experience that really could get things going well one of the things coaches that we see the game is more point guard or guard driven so a team that has guards with experience are usually typically the team that fares a little bit better and hoyer is getting set to check back in maybe he can get some offense going for them with this last 40 seconds okay get the cane up top elbow spots up Nice move by Kane. Not even good. Oh, Dixon with his first points and a tip in. Gets him closer, coach. They were down by five. Dixon tip in, gets it down to three here. 33 to 30. Blue streaks are up. Looks like the shot clock is off. And the blue streaks are gonna be content. We're holding for one. Or maybe not. Rogan spots up. In and out. You got a jump ball here. LaSalle ball, 6.6 .6 seconds to go. Three point advantage for the blue streaks. Gets back to Luke Arelli, back to Dixon. Dixon spots up at three, in and out. Okay coach, that'll end the first half. Blue Streets 33, Cadets 30. I saw, I thought it was, a, you know, like you said earlier, Coach, the game where you could tell it's the first game of the season. You know, a lot of tight shots, a lot of guys came up short, a lot of guys can't find their rhythm, but it been some sparks. Luca Relli came out to play. Rogan has come out to play. Aiden Holmes found uh, places in that game to really do his thing. So, so you can see, you can understand what's going on with these guys that um, it's early in the season. What are your thoughts so far and what you're seeing so far? Well, I'm not surprised at all at Luca Relli and what he's doing. I mean, he's an intense competitor, and he comes out to play. He's going to give it his all on the court, and he's not afraid. He doesn't hesitate, and he attacks with a lot of ferocity and a ferociousness. On the other end, Aiden Holmes is going to do what he does, senior leadership. This is a guy who was a pivotal player in that Section 2 run last year, had some big games, came up with some big moments for Saratoga. And you also know Rogan is a sophomore. You can just tell he feels more comfortable now. He's taking a lot of shots. He hasn't been able to really get anything from the outside to get go down for him. Most of his damage is coming on the inside. He used the glass relatively well inside. And D'Agostino, I mean, that's a guy that a couple years ago wearing that number number 11 jersey reminds us of the, a Trudy guy that used to light up from the outside. And D'Agostino looks like he's filling that boy a little bit here for Saratoga and Coach Usher in the Blue Streaks. Emoja 2 TV halftime report. We're here with Elijah Burns. And Elijah, glad you can uh, make it on our show here. Um, this must be home for you, man. You played here many years ago. Yeah. Talk to me about that experience playing in this gym. It was awesome playing in this gym, playing it for my family every night, and the crowd has been great like it is tonight. Now, um, you're, you're back home, you're playing at Siena. Talk to us about that whole transition from Notre Dame to Siena. 
It's been great so far. Uh, I've known Coach Carm since I was 14, so it's been an easy transition uh, being able to play on the team now, and things are going really well. Now, I saw you in the box score not too long ago. Um, you dropped like 22 points, man. Is that is what's needed of you for that team with a loss of gold to rebound? And what is it? What is exactly what is your role for the Sienna team this year? My role is really just to be myself. Just go out there and play my game each and every night and just try to get wins. All right. So what do you tell me what you see about tonight with these guys, these young uh, cadets, man? Tell me, tell me what you see, what you like. I'm excited for their future. Uh, they have a lot of athleticism, a lot of athleticism. And as they get to grow um, early on in the season, I think they got a lot of potential to do some great things this year. Now you went from Notre Dame, you know what I mean, to Siena. Talk to me a little about the transition from going from high school basketball, obviously, and then going on to play at the college level at that level. Talk to me about that transition and what that looked like. For me, it wasn't too bad of a transition. I went to prep school in between. Uh, so that really prepared me to be ready to be on my own and for the college level competition. So it wasn't as bad as, you know, a regular high school to college transition. But it's definitely a jump in intensity. Communication is one of the biggest things. That's something I always look at when I watch these games. And you watch kids play and they don't talk to each other. So for me, it's watching them communicate on each possession and uh, just trying to win each possession. So what advice would you give to young people out there that's, you know, making that transition and going to college? And sometimes guys get caught up and thinking that they got to go Division One or high Division One and play. What are some of your experiences now that you've traveled, you met a lot of guys out there, seen their stories? What would you say to that? It's all about best fit. You, it's all about best fit. You want to be in the best position for yourself, whether it's Division One, Two, or Three. You want to be in the best position to be able to play your, uh, your skill set and grow as a person on and off the court. You don't want to, if you don't want to go too high and never play and not be a place where you don't grow, you want to be in a spot where you can grow all four years. Okay, now at Sienna, all right, you're being an intricate part of your program and things of that nature. How's that going? What are you looking for? How does it feel to play in front of your hometown, home crowd, family and friends are able to get there? How does that feel? It feels amazing. You know, last year I wasn't able to play when I got here, so now when I get announced in the lineup and they say Troy, New York, it really means a lot to me. Um, being able to hear my family in the background and support me through the whole process. It's been an amazing experience so far. Yeah, we thank you for your time and your energy, and we wish you the best of luck. We're glad you're back home. We get a chance to see a bird's eye view of you, and we know that the best is ahead for you. Thank you All so right. Much. Yep. I appreciate it. Yep. We're back to live action here. 33-30, Blue Streaks clinging to a three-point advantage here, and the Blue Streaks were triggered in to start the second half. Rogan gives it to D'Agostino. Pressure defense up top here. Rogan gets it, looks to penetrate, kicks it to the side pocket there. Oh, dump down to Dofer. Dofer goes strong, scores! <laughs> Dofer been in the bench a long time, coach, with those two early fouls. Stins the lead by five here, 35-30. Blue Shirts are up. Coach, they start a new lineup here in the second half, coach. He starts, that's all starts uh, Hoyer. Kicks it out to Hoyer, Thir turns down the three. Kicks it to Dixon, try to get Dixon going early. Three ball, knocks it in, gets him within two. Desso's making a is making a, um, a short thing to get the ball to Dixon, coach, seems like. Because Dixon, uh, Di Dixon is the guy they got to get going here. He's the guy that want to assert himself a little bit more. They need some offense, and they need him to get started. Holmes from deep, and he gets fouled. He got fouled there, coach, by Hoyer from deep. He would go to the line shooting three. Last year, coach, Aiden Holmes was a very good free throw shooter. Let's see what this year entails. First one's good. Second one is even purer. Coach, what do you think about the routine of uh, uh, Aiden Holmes, Coach? It seems very concise and short, and it's got a rhythm to it. Very simple and sweet. Third one up. Good splash. Every shot got better and better, Coach. Knocks down three free throws. To extend the lead. A long three ball, no good. Rebound. Emery looks to penetrate. Dixon better watch it there, coach. He got three fouls. Kicks it back out to D'Agostino. D'Agostino, oh, turns it over. Good defense there by the cadets. The Blue Streaks hasn't turned it over too much tonight, coach. It seems like they've been, you know, ball controlling very good. That one right there didn't look so well. 
Five turnovers for the game. That was their fifth one. High post here, a little action here. Give and go action here. Catherwood gives it out to Dixon. Going the other way here. They got uh, Demeyer for moving screen there. Moving block. Away from the action too, coach. Coach is up top. I mean, I'm sorry. Referee's up top here by us, and he calling it down low. I'm not even sure this is zone to even watch down there, coach. What do you? What, can you please assess me? Assess on assess that situation there, coach. Hey, coach, I didn't see nothing much. He gave the handoff. He resetted himself. I mean, I didn't see where he didn't give a defender enough room to make any adjustments. So I didn't really understand that one there. In a critical game like this, here you gotta be careful. He picks up his third foul. Now he has to go to the bench. And Dessler has to make a tough decision there. Yes, we got a jump ball here. Emery tied up with Luke Dorelli. And the possession arrow goes to the cadets. Dixon is doing the point guard duties, looking to attack. Kicks it out to Hoyer. Throws it up, gets the roll. Oh, no good. Rogan with a rebound. Coach, Rogan has about five rebounds. Easy already, Coach. Dofer looks to penetrate. Oh, baby! Yo, Coach, Dofer just got athletic just now. Wow, great move. Extends lead by seven. Turnover by Hoyer. The, the cadets got to watch it, Coach. They can get blown out of the gym. Hoyer goes up. Dofer goes up. Anybody to make it that time. Seven-point advantage for... Oh, Lucarelli, nice take. Strong, Lele. Gets it down to five. The Cadets 35, Blue Streaks 40. With 5.20 to go in the third quarter. Oh, baby. Rogan is eating in that eight foot area range, coach. Anywhere from the foul line in, he's doing what he wants. Throws it up top. To Lucarelli. Lucarelli goes up. Oh, I didn't see much there, coach. I didn't see much there. He gets the fall, Luca, he gets the call. Lucarelli will go to the line to try to dig into this deficit that they're in. With 502 to go. Blue streaks 42. Cadets 35. Now I know people don't want to hear this, but this is the reality. That ticky tack foul that Desso probably complained about of that call that caught Evans to, to go to the, um, the um, bench with his third foul. Then you see a foul like that, that might be one where he's just giving a little bit of love back to the coach there after taking some from him. That's true. Luke Reddy misses last two free throws, coach, starting uh, stemming from the first half. And he misses his third in a row. D'Agostino grabs that rebound. Kicks it to Holmes. Holmes fakes the pass, throws it up. Too many steps here. Going other way. We got 450 to go. Coach Usher is clapping. He knows that uh, Eddie Holmes, he likes his players being aggressive, coach. Doesn't want to stymie that aggressiveness. That's their sixth turnover, right, coach? Yes. Okay. Dixon looks to move, maneuver around. Gets it to Kane. Kane is capable of knocking down that three ball, so you got to guard him out there. And he can drive it a little bit. That was a little floater, too strong. Luca Relli, rebound. Cadets are using that size now. Too strong on that. Dofer, rebound, strong. Home gets it. Back to Emery. Emery gets it back to home. Back to Rogan. Rogan dumps it down to Dofer. He goes up, gets bumped. Do uh, Dover respected contact that time. Unable to go, goes up, no good. Going other way, we got four minutes to go. Third quarter, Rogan maintains that position. Oh, spots up, Holmes, in and out. Kane, rebound, gives it to Dixon. They look up, pushes it, gives it to Catherwood. Kane, who can shoot that three ball, he can shoot it. Comes up short, Rogan, another rebound, coach. Rogan's playing big. Yes, he's, he's doing it all. He's handling the ball. He's rebounding. He's passing down low in the high low. He's doing it all, coach. He's doing well around the game. Rebound. Holmes tried to go up against a bigger Jemiah. No good. Cadets looks to penetrate. Oh, Lucarelli too strong on the lele. 
Going another way, off of Kane's foot. Desso wants a timeout to talk about things. This team a little bit out of sorts right now. 42 to 35, Blue Streaks are up with 320 to go. Coach, what are you thinking right now, Coach? Here, what are you thinking right now, Coach? Uh, my thoughts right now is that LaSalle is struggling offensively to get anything generated right now. They're having a hard time. And honestly, Coach, number one, I know we're having a hard time because the way they printed his name and they don't have any um, programs. Right. But number one for LaSalle, Drazen War here. We're, I'm probably butchering. I apologize. I mean, you he's a good passer. You know, he's a guy you got to get the ball in the hands to and let him create a little bit too in the open court. Like you gave the range to Hoyer. Hoyer looked to assert himself to score. He hasn't been able to get much done in the second half here. So you got to look to somewhere else to get your scoring. Lucarelli's giving it what he got. He's coming up short a little bit. LaSalle has to find somewhere, some way to get somebody to get some scoring for him. Saratoga, keep doing what you're doing. They're doing the things they need to do, sharing the ball. Guys are taking their spots and picking their spots when they need to. Yeah, Dixon knocked down that three. You know, um, you got uh, to start off the scoring for the LaSalle cadets in the f second half here, but, you know, it's a far in between since then. Okay, Owens takes the point guard duties, gives it up to D'Agostino. Still in the zone defense here by the cadets. Spots up in the foul line area, unable to go down. Dixon rebounds it. Got a jump ball here. Blue streaks for maintaining possession. Coach Usher wants an explanation from the referee about something now that happened. Coach Usher gets his comp, comp, uh, complimentary drink of water down there in the end. Dixon, great defense, finds a teammate to start the break. Dixon is definitely playing it. Oh, good block by Owens. Good block. Dofer goes up. Oh! Dixon said, not in my house. Oh. Unable to handle the ball there. Lucarelli loses the ball. He was thinking probably dunk there, Coach. He, he probably lost his, lost his train of thought there when the ball got to his hand. Yeah, I don't know, man. He missed a couple point blank layups here. Ball goes out of his hand. Maybe playing with a little jitters. Not normally his style, but hey, you see a little bit of that right now, Coach. I don't know what to term it. Home spots up, knocks it down for three. 10 point advantage, Coach, with 2.30 to go in the third quarter. The blue streaks are starting to exert their will. Jemiah Evans about to enter the game. I think Coach Desto says it's now or never. We got a tip ball here by Rogan on Willoughby. Willoughby finds Lucarelli, looks for Dixon down low. Dixon loses the handle. Emery with the steal. Gives it up to Holmes. Holmes looks to penetrate. Oh, he throws it away. Dixon with the ball. Back to Catherwood. Throws the alley -oop. Lazy pass by Catherwood. Rogan gives it up to Dofer. Dofer finishes strong. Timeout by Desso. We got 153 to go. 12 point advantage for the Blue Streaks coach. 47 35. This might turn into something here, coach, if the cadets are not, not careful. That's a great timeout by Coach Desso because Saratoga is looking to run away and hide right now. They're inserting themselves. They're expanding this to a 12-point lead in the third period. They're playing well on an away game on LaSalle's home court right now. LaSalle has to find somewhere, somehow, to generate some offense. They haven't got anything consistent from anybody thus far. Lucarelli was their early on offense. He has come up short thus far as well, hasn't been able to get it done. And other guys haven't stepped up and got anything done. Hoyer. Came out as well. Game a little bit. Hasn't gave much yet to date in this game so far in the second half. So right now, Saratoga Rogan, I mean, he's assisting, rebounding, handling the ball. He can't get the outside shot to go for him. But well, everything else is going for him right now, Coach. And Aiden Holmes, what's going to say about Aiden Holmes? He's stepping up, taking big threes, showing that he's never scared. I mean, senior leadership, three-point bucket. This is what this guy's providing for these guys right now. Interesting game right now. LaSalle has to stop the bleeding. Well said, Coach. And uh, the Blue Streets walk out of that huddle, ready to finish this thing here, Coach. You know, Delford's been playing big. Playing, I think Delford played behind Trudy and Foxy last season, Coach. It's really gotten him to the level he's at now. I, th I think he's – I don't think he's – he's comfortable yet, Coach. I think as the season goes on, you're going to see Delford really start to assert himself even more. Well, the Coach talked about that. He got in shape. Because he was a little heavier than that last That's year, right. Coach. He's in tremendous shape, and a lot of athleticism is showing. 
And the shot got to get going because Elijah, who we interviewed at halftime, is not walking through that door and putting the jersey on. <laughs> so true. Hoyer crosses over, gets the contact, throws it up, no good. He will go to the line. Shooting two. We got 143 to go, coach. We got to. Uh, they they got to find a way to try to stop this. Uh, this 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 blue streaks tied. All right, uh, it, it, coach. It had to be a 10-0 10 10-0 run. Uh, last I checked. Horry's at the free throw line. I don't think he made any tonight. And that one there was not even close. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. He made that four point play. That's right. Yeah. Um, he and he missed three. He missed three straight. And this is the next one. Coach, they can't generate points any kind of way right now. We got 135 to go in the third quarter. Oh, Rogan, smooth. Goes up, too tough. Jemiah can't handle it. Coach, how do you defend Rogan at that high post or that foul line area? I think teams are going to have a hard time defending him uh, with the shooter that the uh, Blue Shrinks have if you're going to play a 2-3 zone, giving him that ball like that. You're getting the ball like that at the foul line area, coach. I think Rogan is getting the ball at the foul line area is going to be problems for any team in the area. Yeah, I said that earlier on to myself, coach. I like the fact that Coach Usher put him in that position. He can operate great well, and he's shown the ability to pass from there. So he can, And he hasn't even knocked down a shot, and we know he can. But this is the first game of the season. So you're right, coach. That's going to be a tougher cover for a lot of teams. Emery dribbles too much. Rogan's there to pick it up. Rogan there calmly gets it out to Emery for the corner. Side pocket, no good. Dofer, coach. Look at Dofer. He goes up, he gets hit. I think that if Jemiah Evans doesn't swing down and catches it as it goes up, that's not, you don't give the implication that you're fouling. Even though you might not have fouled, you give that implication that you are fouling when you swing down that way, coach. What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, my thoughts is that, yeah, you have a point, but in that situation, the ref, when a big guy in foul trouble already, you got to make sure he hit that guy. You know what I mean? That's on you. That's the only son you as the official. I, I, I understand what you're saying, having verticality and all that, but if he extends the door block, make sure it's a foul when he has to go to the bench with 107 left here in the third period with his fourth foul. Wow. Dofer makes his first free throw. Makes his second. I got the uh, blue streaks only missing two free throws all night. We got a foul here on the reach in. I got the blue streaks only missing, coach. Uh, one, I mean two free throws. What do you got? We got 14 fouls for LaSalle, and we got 13 fouls for the blue streaks. As a team from the free throw line, Saratoga blue streaks are eight for 10. Oh, he finally get a bucket to go down for the cadets here. Dixon knocks down the free throw. They, uh, the, the LaSalle cadets are shooting from the free throw line, six for 14. Next, second one was Pierre. Look, extend the pressure defense here by Hoyer on uh, uh, Holmes. Might be a box and one, it looks like. Or a matchup box and one. Dofer? Dofer even tried it. Good rebound. Long arms by Rogan. Try to get it down low, Dofer did. Unable to get it, unable to connect. 49-37. Kane spots in the side pocket. Too strong. Lucarelli goes up, gets it to drop. Get it down to 10 here with 25 seconds to go. The cadets are starting to find a little bit of stride here. Rogan drives it. Got it still here by Willoughby. He goes up, too strong. Lucarelli gets it. He was too strong. Got a travel here by Lucarelli going the other way. He gives a tech to Desso for stepping on the court. Coach Desso wants some answers. He thought it should have been a tie up, if anything, not a travel call with both guys' hands on the ball there. We got 10.06 to go. Referees talk about it. We got a 10 point advantage for the Blue Streaks, 49 39. The referee is sticking to his call. He's going to stick with the technical foul here. It would give the Blue Streaks, who's been shooting for the free throw line well tonight, 
presumably two extra, two freebies um, right now, headed into the fourth period. Eddie Holmes up, comes up short on the first one. His first free throw missed for the night. Second one up and again. Looks like Saratoga brought up a little, a little crowd with them down, down here as well. <laughs> I think they travel very well. The Blue Streets travel very well, coach. Okay, Blue Streaks after that technical foul, went down to half court. With 11 point advantage, 50 to 39, under 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, he gets it blocked by Aiden Holmes. The one point advantage for the Blue Streaks here. I believe the Cadets will take it out of bounds to start the final stanza. Coach, any thoughts right now, real quick? I tell you, um, right now, I mean, my thoughts are Saratoga is playing a very polished game. For them to come out the first game of the season and be playing like they're playing, coming down here in LaSalle's home, knowing that the last couple of years these teams are going nip and tuck, uh, probably a point to ritual of under five points between the last two years. For them to come in like this here with an 11-point lead going into the fourth quarter speaks values about you, Moses, too, TV coach of the year last year and Matt Usher and what he does with that program and having those guys ready to play. Final stanza with the cadets to take the ball out here with 11 point deficit, 50 to 39 here, coach. What do the cadets have to do, coach, to get back into this thing? Like I said, they have to find some offense somewhere, get Corelli, Corelli going, get Dixon going, get all the other guys going. Kane hasn't hit a three pointer yet, so these guys got to get going here a little bit, coach. Dixon looking to assert himself. Catherwood, five, seven, three, unable to go down. Kane rebounds it. Try to get it out. No good. Dofer there with the rebound. Dofer pushes it up. They got a lot of people in this team that could dribble the ball for the Blue Streaks, coach. It's not just one person. Emery spots up. No good. Oh, he gets it tipped out. Dofer tips it out. Oh, and Holmes is there to pick up, pick up the pieces. <laughs> he scores the left hand down low. Stins the lead to 13. Okay, Holmes tries to battle the bigger Lucarelli. Gets underneath too much, too much contact there. Referee calls a foul. That's their third team foul. With 7.06 to go, 52-39. Dixon spots up, unable to go down. The cadets are, I mean, I'm sorry, the Blue Streaks are seven minutes away from starting the season off where they left it. Rogan loses the handle, regains it. Emery drives. Oh, tried to kick it in. Look at Rogan. Ro uh, look at Rogan is there again. Unable to go down after the tip. D Dixon gets it. Full head of steam. Kicks it out. Voids the charge smartly. Knocks it down. Col Catherwood, the lefty, knocks it in. Gets it to 10 with three with 630 to go. Dofer spots up in the corner. Knocks it in. Gets it back, a 13-point advantage here. Timeout by Coach Usher. He wants to talk some things over. With 6.26 to go. 55-42. Okay, we're starting this. Starting with the uh, cadets with the ball here. Dixon looks to start the offense. Catherwood who knocked down the last three, looking to get going. Lucarelli is posting up strong. That's really ticky-tack right there, really ticky-tack. That's the 15th foul for the Blue Streaks. I didn't see nothing there to, to gun or foul. I didn't, I, I, we supposed to let guys just post you up at will? I just don't get it. Okay, Catherwood, Catherwood will trigger it in. Looks for Lucarelli. Lucarelli gets it tipped away. He was being aggressive, coach. He was being aggressive, just lost the handle after a tip by the person who's guarding inbounder. Rogan looks to start the offense for the Blue Streaks. They work it around. Dofer for his third three, second three. Okay, no good. Kicks it out to Catherwood. Catherwood kicks it out to Hoyer, who's been hot from out there. 
unable to go down. Jemiah gets low bridged by Emery. Jemiah, Jemiah Evans will go to the free throw line, down by a 13 point deficit. D'Agostino will come back in the game. I think Dofer needs to chill with the three pointers right now, unless he gets it in, uh, within the cons. Uh, confines of the offense, coach. Dofer is getting it down on one pass after a break. I don't know if that's quite his game right now. You know what I mean? So I think Dofer would just do his team better by just getting that three ball if he gets it. He's been dominating down low to get that three within the confines of a, of the offense. I, I don't know yet. I don't know if he's a three-point shooter or can he stroke it down. He already hit one already, so I don't know, coach. I don't know. He played nearly the whole game except for that uh, second quarter, so I don't, you know, he had a pretty opportunity. Throws up. That's Emery. Dofer can rebound, coach. So we'll see. I like Dofer. We'll see what he can bring as the season goes along. I like him down there, coach. I like him down there. He gets it tipped away. Two, two blue streaks are down. It's a good foul there, coach. After he missed his last two, Hoyer, Hoyer did. That's not a bad foul. And they're down, and they're up by 13. Make them earn it. Only bad thing about it, he stopped the clock with 5.23 to go with a 13-point advantage for the Blue Streak. First one's up. Good. <laughs> Seen to fix his foul shooting wolves there. Knocks in both. D'Agostino is being pressured by Dixon. Good defense there by, good defense there by, good defense there by Dixon to make him rush that pass there up top. 11 point deficit, every turnover that goes in the cadets' favor is gonna help them get back into this, get back into this game. They're down 11, coach, it's not like it's the end of the world. You make a couple, get a couple stops like you did, knock down a couple buckets. Coach, you, you know, you, you start to make the blue streaks a little leery. You got a foul up top by uh, Holmes. That was a good thought there by Holmes. If he just would have left a little earlier without making contact, I think Dixon might have coughed it up. We got uh, one and one going on, 18 foul, one and one for the uh, LaSalle Cadets. So this can go in the Cadets' favor right now, uh, making free throws while the clock is stopped. Coach, what are your thoughts right now? My thoughts right now is that, like you said, this is a good opportunity for them to make some free throws. They got to cash in, and they didn't right there. So, but they got to be able to get stops here. They got to get some stops here and be able to score some points to get back in the game, make a little run of their own right in here, Coach. Long three by D'Agostino, unable to go down. Dixon looks to go, gives it up. Hoyer turns it down, gets it back to Catherwood. Catherwood can cause for the travel. Coach, that's Catherwood right there. I think that's the coach of uh, Bob Catherwood, the old Hudson Valley coach there um, from years ago. Bo Catherwood, the, the, uh, the son of Bob Catherwood. They work the ball around for the cadets. There's a shot clock violation. Yeah, ob yeah, obviously the shot clock is definitely malfunction or something. I wish they put the shot clock coach by the basket on top of the bas basket. From the hoop, that'd be nice. I'm not going to invest in one. <laughs> they got enough money on this school that they can buy their own. <laughs> That Coach Desso was trying to earn every advantage he could. Working these referees. He knows his team is not out of it yet. Down 11 with 4.26 to go in the final stanza here. 19 seconds left on the shot clock here. The referees surmised that was the position of the shot clock. Aiden Holmes getting pressured by the Hoyer. Rogan gets it in, gets bumped by Dixon. Oh, baby, nice take. He caused the bump before the shot was attempted. They would take it out of bounds. 16 foul, sorry about that. 16 foul by the 
Cadets. They got that stacked uh, in inbound play, Coach. They've been using all day. On oh, pump fakes, goes up, jump hook. Rogan getting it done. Any way you, any way he knows how. Rebounding, assisting, scoring, whatever it needs to be done, he's doing it. Luca Relli, big three right here. Knocks it in, Luca Relli. Okay, we got issues with the, with the scores table right now. Shot clock definitely, and I think the score might be an issue too. I, I like I like Coach Usher's demeanor. He's helping the referees out <laughs> with the shot clock. Absolutely, he's over here giving instructions about what should be the score, what should be the shot clock situation. He's directing everything: the kid, the players, the table, the referees, the whole nine yards. I guess when you're up by ten points here on the road with four minutes left to go, roughly, you can dictate everything. I guess, Coach. <laughs> Desso still working the sidelines, coach, clapping his guys up, trying to get them motivated to push through. Under four minutes, get it to Rogan at the foul line. Oh, Doford. Oh, he couldn't get the bunny. He could not get the bunny, coach. We're under 340 to play here, coach, in the final stanza. Dixon looks to throw the floater up, and it's short. Emery with the rebound. I'm sorry, that's Britain with the rebound. I'll be calling the wrong name all night. <laughs> 10 point advantage uh, for the uh, Blue Streaks, 57 47, with 3.31 to go. Timeout by Coach Usher. And this one just makes Usher who he is. He does a good, he's up by 10 points with 3.31. He doesn't like the flow of the offense the last couple times down the floor. So he wants to make sure he gets a good possession here. So he calls a timely timeout up by 10 to get a good possession here, milk some clock, and hopefully get a shot that he's looking for. Knowing that, 30 seconds, I take this down, automatically take a possession away, three minutes left on the clock. I mean, this is the stuff we're talking about here, guys. That's why last year he was Emotion 2 TV's co-coach of the year. This is the stuff that this guy does. Coach, no doubt about it. I mean, with this team that he got this year, Coach, after losing so much after the last two years, Coach, he's, this might be possibly no matter what his record is, if he's if he's maintaining a, a decent record, it might be his best coaching job, coach. I mean, I'm throwing records out of the uh, out of the window right now. I mean, if this guy can motivate this team to uh, to to do big things, I'm I'm gonna be blown away by Coach Usher, coach. I mean, you do got Rogan, who's fantastic. You do got Aiden Holmes, who's a, who's a, a budding superstar. You do got Doford, who's about to explode this season. I mean, but you know. Basically, you know, we got some new guys he's working with. The ball gets triggered in by the Blue Streaks, get tapped away by the cadets. The Blue Streaks will maintain possession with 3.26 to go. Again, Coach, just like you said before, you know, Usher's calm, calming presence on the sideline I think goes a long way for the players on the court as well. That might have been that might have been steps there, coach. I think the I think the referees might have missed that one. That would have been a huge turnover for the motivation and the mindset of um, oh get, you get one anyway. We got to back it back and over, over and back. I'm sorry, get the turnover anyway. With 3:07 to go, a lot of time here, coach, for the for the cadet. This beautiful game has a way of balancing itself out sometimes. Sometimes you just got to be relaxed and be patient. You have an obviously travel that was missed, and then what happens, a backcourt situation, no harm, no foul. This game, beautiful game, balances itself out. Beautiful game indeed. We all love. Dixon looks to, they got to get going a little bit here, Coach. You know, time is a, of an essence right now, Coach. You want to get something quick, a good shot quick. Want to get moving something, going to the basket, maybe drawing a foul to stop the clock. You want to get this thing moving like Luke really did just there. Gets, they've been calling that a jump ball all night, Coach. And just this now, they call a jump, they call a foul on that one. Okay, Luke Riley, Coach, who's been off and off on the free throw line all night. Let's see if he can, you no, know, get it with, 
uh, within single digits, Coach, for the first time in a long time tonight. Yeah, he's three for six, so it'd be this is just two big free throws right here to try to get this thing under double digits right now with about roughly 250 left in the game here. And this would be a good time. From, I'm trying, probably Dessel will take a time out here, maybe extend some pressure, maybe come out and do something a little bit different. Let's see what happens. Lucarelli knocks down the first one. Coach, when do you think you start thinking about playing the foul game? Even though the, though the Blue Shape is shooting the ball from the foul line pretty decent tonight, when do you think you start trying to extend this game? You know, right now you're down by 10. I don't, it's kind of tricky, Coach. You're in a tricky area right now. So did they put the point in the right spot? I'm not sure. But what do you think? When do you start playing the foul game? Uh, Luke already missed that second free throw. I think, Coach, I think right now you just got to play real hard defense right now because you'll put them in a one and one anyway, and they come up with a steal right there. Luca Relli goes up, finishes. Luca Relli with a nice finish off the feed from his teammate. Get it, and they get it in single digits here. 57 50. Blue streaks are up. Oh, he just took it away. Luca Relli. Scores again. Wow. They getting back into it. Defense, coach. The guards for the Saratoga Blue Streets, coach, are starting to lose their composure here a little bit. What are your thoughts? 2.14 to go. And uh, they're up. Blue Streets are up 57 52. Well, this is what it's all about right now. You got LaSalle coming out, extending the pressure. Forcing the action a little bit, a little desperation right now. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And right now, Saratoga has to show some poise and composure right now with the pressure being applied. And this is when sometimes when you lose a little bit of leadership, senior leadership, this is when other guys got to step up in these situations. And it can become a little bit unnerving right now. Pressure bust price. So you can expect, you saw Coach Desso right there, Cole calling Dixon out to extend the pressure to come out and wrap it up. And right now it's paying dividends. So right now you'll see LaSalle keep extending. Let's see how Saratoga handles it. Now you know Usher, he's in that huddle. He's calling something now. Be patient, we'll see what happens. Yes, sir, coach, it comes down. I think the aggressive play that Desto has employed, coach, I think he's like, yo, go for the ball. They call a foul, they just call a foul. It's not, it works in our favor anyway. Uh, that's the foul game that you're talking about. It's different levels to this. The foul game can be automatically, it can be just play pressure. If they go to the line, they go to the line. It's what it is. But right now, with 214 left, you just don't want to foul. Right, right, right. right now, it's just straight up. He got a little pressure here. Oh, another turnover. Rogan turns it over. Luke Relly goes down the floor, blocking. Luke Relly will go to the line. Aiden Holmes gets called for the foul. It's fourth. Foul, Aiden Holmes. That's big right there, coach. We're 2.02 to go, and you're clinging to a five-point advantage. What are your thoughts? Yeah, he has to be very careful. That's a guy that Coach Usher cannot afford not to have on the floor. Big free throws here, but Luca Relli to bring this game, and he misses the first one. This is where that's been hurting LaSalle all game. I know they, when Desso look back on this, this is one area he's going to be able to point to and say, hey, guys, this is where we probably lost the game and come up short. But we'll see what happens. It's too early to tell. Second one's up, and it's, oh, Rose. Jemiah has a finger on it, unable to go. We got free throws here for Aiden Holmes. Luca Relli fouls at a two-minute mark here. Free throw contest. It will come down to Desso's giving Luca Relli some encouragement to keep his head in it. We still got a lot of time. We might need you later in this game. So Desso's definitely encouraging his, his main man to keep his head in the game. Aiden Holmes has been shooting free throws well all night. He only missed one at the line. Right now it's a one and one. Knocks it in calmly. Extends the lead back to six. Right now, Coach LaSalle's in a two, a two foul. They get two foul shots if they get fouled again, no matter if it's shooting or not. Double bonus. And Aiden Holmes knocks down both with 157 to go. Final stanza. Oh, wide open. Catherine with big shot. Air ball, nothing but oxygen. Gives it to Rogan. They're in no rush whatsoever. 
He's reaching there. Dixon got to watch out for that foul. I think he got four fouls too. And Holmes goes all up. He gets fouled there by Lucarelli on the outside there, Coach. What do you think about that call there, Coach? I didn't see much there. I got blocked out. Yeah, from my vantage point, Coach, I thought he got all ball on that. I thought that was a premature whistle. Sometimes when you see a block coming with a guy coming at it so hard, you almost prematurely start to blow your whistle before the contact even happens. One of those you wish you could take back. And Aiden Holmes, oh, he comes up short on the free throw line. Uncharacteristically, these are all pressure moments. Here. We got 134 to go, Coach. Every bucket. If you get a half a bucket, you would want that right now. It's critical. Knocks in the second. <laughs> That's how critical it is, Coach. You would take a half a bucket right now. <laughs> all right, here we go. Under 125 to go. They got to watch those pass, the long arms of Rogan. We got something going on. We got a timeout here by Coach Desto. He wants to draw something up. You're down by eight, Coach, 60 to 52, with 120 to go. It's, uh, coach, it's obvious you're going full court, extended after you make this shot or, or make, uh, go to, after you make a foul shot. No matter what's going on, I think LaSalle extended full court. What are your thoughts? Yeah, right now, this is a proper way to make total utilization of your timeout. Make sure you call up several things right now. If you can get three things, if you can get the play you want now, the defense you want, and without a turnover, the next play you want, maximize the timeout as much as possible right now. You know what I'm saying, Coach? They got two left by a mug count. They're in a great situation. Coach Desso has to be happy with these kids nonetheless. I mean, these kids have battled. They came in and played the first game of the season. They didn't lay down and die. They didn't roll over and play dead. They didn't do none of that. They kept battling. Even when things seemed very bleak for them, when they were down by much as 14 points in this game, they continued to fight and climb back and find themselves still within striking distance right here. No question about it, Coach. Uh, whoever's gonna, whoever plays LaSalle, either at their gym or here, is going to be in for a fight, regardless. You know what I mean? But especially if you're in this gym. This gym is so up on you, so condensed. You know what I mean? It's like playing in a cage, in a way. You know what I mean? So you better bring your hard hat and your tin boots and your and your Carhartt jacket and you know all those things. I think they, I think you can hear fans breathing on your neck when you play in this gym. <laughs> that is so true. Dixon will trigger it in, coach. Down by eight, 60 to 52, with 120 to go on the clock here, coach. Everything is critical here. We got a zone defense by the Blue Streaks here. They're not respecting their three-point game. It looks like. Oh, it turns to a man-to-man, -man, coach. Very tricky there by Usher. Gets it out of Cavwood. Cavwood doesn't want to force it. He does force it this time. Throws it up. No good. Dofer boxes out. Lovely. Good box out there by Dofer. Goes out the hands of Jemiah Evans with 106 to go on the clock here. Full court pressure coach here by the cadets. They got to watch the 10 second call here. They get it up. He breaks the timeline. Get a foul up top. Uh, Holmes is the wrong guy you want to foul. He had a lot of presence at the foul line tonight. He's very comfortable with the foul line, especially tonight. He's been there so many times. He only missed two free throws um, on the free throw line on the night, Coach. He's seven for nine. We got a sub in here. One in one situation here, Coach. Next one will be a double bonus for, uh, for the uh, Blue Streaks if they get fouled again. We got 57.1 seconds to go, Coach. Again, everything is critical. Oh, a bounce out. Oh, uh, Holmes misses that free throw. Dixon is seeking out a three ball, unable to get uh, separation. Looks to drive it all the way. Gets the contact. He tried to get the three point play the old fashioned way. He draws the contact on Emery. Dixon hasn't been in the free throw line that often. Coach, I got him making a two of three tonight. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't make it. Double bonus here, so he'll get another free throw. Like the fans are starting to pile out a little bit. Second one good. Get it up to uh, Holmes. Holmes breaks the pressure. He's using Euro step. Gets it blocked. Goes out of bounds. You like that play, coach? Him breaking that pressure and then applying that pressure, attacking the rim by Aiden, or you like him to pull it back out? 
Uh, what I'm with Saratoga is he has a night knack for knowing when to let these guys go and then when to pull it out and not these guys be too methodical. Oh, that, that was a big miss right there. That would cut the lead within five. Yeah. Oh, Dixon gets it back. Well, forgets it. Oh, free ball. Kane unable to go down. Holmes gets it. He gets fouled. He double bonus. He will shoot two free throws. Cadets down seven. 16.3 to go. 60 to 53. Blue Streaks has the advantage. Okay. Aiden Holmes missed his last free throw last time. Let's see how he does this time. First one's up. Good. Knocks it in. Coach, this game has been exciting. Nonetheless, Coach, it's been an exciting game. Both teams are going to do very well this season, and I'm looking forward to seeing, all of, seeing both of these teams play. Absolutely. you got to give your hats off and take a lot of credit for these guys. These guys did a tremendous job coming out here. Opening game. Didn't have a lot of time in between practices and scrimmages, but they got and put a nice show on tonight. So good look, something to look forward. Dixon gets a layup and a timeout by Desso. But, yes, Coach, so it's a nice – Little opening game tonight. Both teams showed a lot of gut, a lot of grit, and a lot of fight. Yeah, Doford is agonizing right now. He got hit in the head with, with an elbow. Like, he's, like he's, in, he's agonizing right now, coach. He might have to go to the uh, concussion protocol after that. The way he looking. <laughs> coach, you got 9.7 seconds left. Desso was definitely going to foul, I believe, with the full court pressure coming up. Coach, Dufford got a foul here. Rogan will go to the foul line. Coach Dufford got hit in the head with an elbow. Look like, like it could. I'm, I'm only speculating here. I don't know about concussion protocol here. What are your thoughts on referees' a responsibility in that situation? Well, one of the things that they, they cover in the pregame when they talk to coaches and they bring the coaches to the middle of the floor is they want to know do you have a team physician or uh, someone on hand from the medical department that is uh, capable or eligible to be able to diagnose whether you have a concussion. If you do, usually, typically, especially at the varsity level, you usually do have someone. Missed the first one, Rogan did. If you don't have a team physician, like a lot of times they don't have at the lower levels, what happens is that it falls on the officials. If they deem that the guy is not fit to come back into the game and they can't find no other opinion, then it's the referee's decision. And once they say he can't come back in the game, if no, there's no team physician or doctor to uh, overrule that or give any input, then it stands. But like I said, most varsity official games, you have someone like a trainer of some sort that's at the game. Yes, indeed. We got 2.4 seconds to go, Coach. 63 to 55. Cadets are looking to trigger the ball in. Coach Usher's uh, uh, barking out the plays. No fouls, no threes. Catherwood gets it, fades away the three ball, no good. All right, Coach, the blue streak is, you know, walk out here with a – with a 63 to 55 advantage, coach. Uh, exciting game to the very end. What are your thoughts about how this particular game ended? Well, I mean, Coach Usher couldn't be more proud of his guys. You know, coming off a section title, the first thing you want to do is make sure you get all that stuff out of these guys' head. And that's when we talked to Usher, he talked about that. Get that out of these guys' head. New season, new everything. Start, start from the beginning and to come out here on the road in a nice and by high style environment like this and get a nice victory, boats well for him moving forward. You know what I mean? So, Coach, that's all he knows. He has a lot of young players. He lost the three-headed horsemen with the Sharons, Sepul, and Bogart last year. So these guys are bad. I mean, you got to reload, and you hope these guys that you're bringing up, they had a lot of time as sophomores, pays dividends. So it's a good game to start off with tonight. He goes back to the drawing board, watch some film, go over some things. And then start to correct some things and put these guys in a better position to be successful. But overall, I think both coaches got to play. Hey, it was a successful night tonight. Okay, that does it here from LaSalle and where the Blue Streaks take home a road victory, 63-55 to to start the season. And LaSalle will start the season 0-1. We'll see you guys next time. Emoja 2 TV.
You Mojo 2 TV post game report. We're here with Coach Matt Usher. Coach, um, you, you know, you're leading the Blue Streaks again of Saratoga to another victory in this tough, hostile environment. Um, talk to me about, you know, the size that you had to go up against tonight. I mean, those guys were huge. Yeah, um, I knew they were going to be big, but I saw the roster and saw there was a 6'8 guy that I didn't kind of, uh, I didn't factor in, and it was. It was quite an imposing lineup as far as 6'8", 6'7", 6'6", with all sorts of length in a gym that's, that can be tight. You know, this is a, a small gym, so that length just uh, seems like it's everywhere. Um, very happy with how tough and intense Chris Dufort played. Michael Rogan played, played strong inside. So got a lot of things we need to clean up, but, you know, I'll take a, a W against a good team in their gym early, and, you know, we'll, we'll build on it. So when did you when did you start to see that the tide started turning in your favor? What part of the game uh, when that happened? And tell me, what did you do exactly to get that advantage? I think the third quarter we uh, we really locked in defensively and started started getting stops and, and strung a few stops together, and that led to some transi transition baskets. I think we we play well when we get out and run. Um, we need to to improve in the half court. So I think that helped us get the lead with a couple stops, some rebounds that we turned into transition points. And you know, getting on the old boards, I thought we got some guys really get after it. Bryce Emery, um, Christian Dufort, as I mentioned, just going after it and getting some some garbage points in the paint against uh, some size that they were giving up. I noticed too that you know I was talking to a coach on the sportscast that Dufort, you know, playing behind Trudy and Matt, uh, Foxy last year, uh, you know, impressed every day. I think it's really his coming out party. You know, I think he might have. I don't think we've seen the best out of this kid yet. You know what I mean? So. Um, what do you think he's going to provide from you? I saw him a lot of three-pointers, but down low, he was definitely battling those big guys. What do you think his, his offense production is going to be for you? Yeah, I think he's a guy that can really help us on, on both ends of the floor. He rebounded the ball very well tonight, and he's capable of stepping out and hitting jump shots. I mean, he, we basically play with five guards on the floor. I mean, Dufour can handle the ball. He can hit shots from the perimeter. I have no problem with, with Rogan or Duford or Bryce or any of our guys ripping a rebound and, and starting the break. So, yeah, Chris, Chris had a great offseason. Um, I think he benefited from, from playing up last year, even though I'm sure at times last year not, not seeing the floor as much as he might have liked. It was hard for him. It was hard for me because I knew he was a good player. And, you know, playing behind those guys is, is hard. 6'8", six, 6'6". Six, six. They didn't come off the floor much, but he got better every day in practice. And he's the type of kid that just, you know, He's smart, and he worked, and he got better, and he's going to really, you know, reap the benefits of it this season. Talk to me about um, your positioning of Rogan. I mean, I thought it was key. You put him at the foul line, extended area, maybe to the top of the key, getting the ball there, making some good, good choices, good decisions there, either shooting it, driving it, and finding some guys down low. I thought he played wonderful from that position. I agree. He gave some of our guys really easy buckets. Uh, he gave Luke Britton some easy looks. They're going to collapse on him because he's capable of scoring and going off. I know he's probably upset because he, he missed some shots tonight that he's very capable of making, but he played great for us. I, he, I mean, I know he had 14. He probably had close to 10 rebounds and <laughs> six or seven assists. He's a guy that could be a legitimate triple-double threat every night. Um, at 6'6", six, six, he can play the point. Uh, we had him starting off at the point tonight, and then he's guarding a guy that's 6'7 or 6'8. And I think that's why he's going to be a very good college basketball player wherever he ends up going. So talk to me about the toughness of your, you know, your senior captain, Aiden Holmes, tonight. Um, he came down, made some timely threes, and um, got in there and toughed it up with some tie-ups down there. Just talk about his overall play tonight. Uh, he's, he's one of the toughest kids I've ever coached. Um, mentally, doesn't get rattled. Um, hits big free throws down the stretch. Hits, hits tough threes when we need them. And yeah, he, he'll mix it up. He'll take a charge, grab a big rebound. So he does it all for us. And he's the guy that we're going to look to to really settle some of these younger guys that are, that are stepping into new roles. And, you know, he's got he's to be the guy for us and lead the way. Coach, last year up in Onondaga, he came in, started off the season with nice victory up there against those guys. It's good to come in here on the road again and get a nice victory. What that does for a team like that, coming in here and getting a victory like that? Yeah, I think on the road in this environment, that was a great test for us. And I think even down the stretch, as frustrating as that was, watching us turn the ball over, and, and obviously we're going to have to work on our composure and poise. Um, that's great. You can't simulate that in practice. Playing against a good team in a gym like this where it gets loud is going to help us build and, and get better. So yeah, we tried to, tried to load up the non-leagues a little bit, whether it's Green Tech, LaSalle, going out to Syracuse and playing Corcoran. So, um, yeah, you know, it might, it might hurt our record in the end. Um, we might not go in with a great record because we're playing tough teams on the road in this environment, but I think it'll help us get better, and that's what we're trying to do moving forward. 
They say teams take on the identity of their coach. And when we look over there, we always see you poised, calm, cool, and collective. Is that kind of what, you know, your kind of team, the identity you guys take on? Yeah, I don't, I, I'm glad I look that way because I don't always, you know, I get fired up over there and I try to do a better job keeping it in. But we've got some guys that are, you know, battle tested veterans. Aiden Holmes does a great job. Um, that's something, you know, I'm trying to work on as a coach, getting better in those, those moments on the fly down the stretch. And, you know, it's something that these guys will continue to work on. And, and I think we've, we've gotten better throughout the past couple seasons uh, moving into sectional time. And, and that's my hope again this year. Well, Coach, it was a pleasure. I wouldn't change much if I were you. The Saratoga Blue Streaks are doing an awesome job coming off a Section 2 championship. You coming off of a co-coach of the year from Emoja 2 TV. You guys just keep that train rolling. Thanks a lot for your time, Coach. Yes. The Emoji 2 TV, we're here with Michael Rogan, uh, the 6'6 guard. Uh, Mike, um, talk to me about you know tonight's um, opening game performance, man. I mean, you came out focused, came out firing, came out rebounding, kept out, came out assisting. You seem to be a guy that was a stat sheet stuffer tonight. Um, what got you so motivated and so focused tonight to play like that? Um, I'm not really sure. I just always come out that way with that focus. Uh, I really want to win. I'm a good competitor. I just hate losing, so that's what drives me. Tonight a little bit, you know, like uh, you did a lot of stuff. You rebounded, you assisted, scored, but just like your shot. You couldn't find your shot. Talk to us a little bit about that. Was, how frustrating is that for you? Uh, it was definitely really frustrating, but I kept trying, and I guess it just wasn't my night. I couldn't find the stroke. Well, you guys got the W, so obviously it's your night. Um, you used the glass real well, interior side, and you did some nice high-low passing as well. Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, we work a lot, or we work on that a lot in practice. So, like, I'm used to that. When I catch it up top, I always just look in the middle because it's usually wide open. So, when I turn and face, it's usually the first option. Well, it was a fine game tonight for you guys coming out. Good victory and good luck the rest of the way. All right? Thank you. You Mojo 2 TV, I'm here with uh, star guard Aiden Holmes of Saratoga Blue Streaks. Um, Aiden, you came out focused tonight. I saw in the, during that matchup early in the game, you know, Luke Corelli knocked down a shot. You come down, knocked down a shot. He knocked down a shot. Knocked, what was going on out there in the early parts of that game? I don't, I don't think that was nothing personal. Um, but it just, ha it just happened that he hit one, I hit one. I wasn't thinking about it for sure. <laughs> so talk to me about the, you know what you what you wanted to come out here and do when you when, you, when the game when the jump ball went up. Tell me what your main purpose was of doing here tonight. Yeah, we came in with a mentality to be the aggressor. So all five of us, we knew they were going to be in a zone all game. They're long, um, attacking that zone to the middle, kicking out for three, attacking to the middle. Rogan did a great job tonight in the post. I heard him say he wasn't hitting shot. It wasn't his night. He played awesome for us. Um, rebounded, Dufour played awesome, Emery played awesome, rebounding. So yeah, we're just trying to be the aggressor and be the tougher team and who, wa who wanted it more was what it came down to. Yeah. Um, you played a, a, a fabulous game, I believe you scored over uh, 19 points, um, hit not a lot of threes, knocked down some critical free throws, you shot well for, uh, percentage for the free throw line. Um, so talk to me about, you mentioned Do Dofer, talk to me about his presence, man. It's like he really wants it this year after sitting behind those two big fellas last year. Yeah, right, last year he sat behind and watched for for a long time. Um, I think he learned a lot. He came in right, right when we started off season uh, after, last, after last year. He had a whole new mentality. He wanted the ball. He wanted to score. He's strong inside. And I think he really put it to them tonight. There was a stretch in the game where you guys had a comfortable lead and LaSalle made a little run, put a little pressure, and cut it in five. What are your thoughts and what are you going through at that time? And what are you trying to help the team maintain at that juncture? Yeah, Coach, Coach preaches before every game, poise. Um, staying under, staying under control when the intensity gets up. Playing in a small gym, it got loud in there. Um, get, we got trapped in the corner a few times. A couple of bad turnovers. Um, at that point, you're just talking, trying to calm down. Um, they threw a box and one there, adjusting to that. It's all, it's all work in progress, but. I think that late game situation is definitely something we got to work on. So, with senior leadership in that situation, what are you, what are you doing personally, and what are you trying to enumerate to the team to do as well? Just communication, um, talking everyone through it. We have juniors who this was their first varsity, first varsity game, and just communicating, uh, giving them confidence, telling them where to be. They know, but just someone telling them, making them more confident, always helps. Um, Luke Britton played great tonight. And everyone else out there besides Dags was, and Rogan was bit more, probably one of their bigger varsity games so far. So, yeah, 
senior leadership, confidence, communication. All right, great job tonight, and good luck the rest of the way, all right?